Welcome to AP Chemistry and General Chemistry. I'm Jeremy Krug. In this lesson, we're learning about electrochemistry and calculations involving galvanic cells. My channel has the entire AP Chemistry course, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss a thing. So moving on here, if we take a look at this galvanic cell, we looked at the structure of galvanic cells in the last video, but one thing that we just skimmed over and didn't talk about was how can you tell, just by looking at this battery, which of those two electrodes is going to be oxidized and which one is going to be reduced? Well, it has something to do with the activity series. Now, you might remember the activity series from an earlier video back in Lesson 11. If you uh, don't remember that, you might want to take a look at that video again, or those series of videos, rather. Um, and we can say that the elements or the, the metals that are higher up on this activity series are more easily oxidized. And so that means that if we compare zinc and silver, well, zinc is right here and silver is almost at the very bottom. So that tells us that zinc is going to be more easily oxidized. It's going to be oxidized by the ions underneath it. So zinc is oxidized. So it goes from zinc metal into zinc two ions. That's the most common uh, ionic form of zinc. And of course, we balance that by adding a couple electrons over here. And then the silver ions are going to be reduced. So we have the silver ions that are going to be reduced down into just plain silver metal. And of course, we need an electron over here to do that. So since we see that there's oxidation taking place over here, well, that means this is the anode because oxidation always takes place at the anode. And that means this side would have to be the cathode. And so we can figure this out pretty easily just by looking at the activity series. And so once again, the higher up it is on the activity series, the more easily oxidized the metal is going to be. Now, this kind of uh, raises the question, where do these elements come from on the activity series? These have to come from somewhere. Well, they actually are a product of something that we call a list of standard reduction potentials. We said in the last video that every half reaction has a voltage or a potential difference associated with it. Well, if we write all of these as reductions, and I have, these are not all of the possible reductions that you could have, or half reaction reductions you could have, but these are a lot of them, and the most common ones in AP Chemistry. We can actually rank them in order we have the highest voltage, or the highest potential difference, all the way down to the lowest potential difference. And we can start to see something. We can see that the elements that were higher up on our list on the activity series, series are, on, are on one end of this, and the ones that are on the other end of the activity series are on the other end of the list of reduction potentials. This is going to help us to answer these types of questions when we are being asked questions about galvanic cells. We're going to refer to this list pretty commonly. Um, your chemistry instructor, hopefully, has given you a copy of this list or one very similar to it. And if you don't have one, it should be found very easily in your chemistry textbook or on the internet. Now, all textbooks give these potential differences as reduction half reactions. And that's just, that's just how it is. They always write them as reductions. That's just the convention. Even though, as we know, every galvanic cell has to have one reduction and one oxidation. That's why it's called redox, right? Reduction, oxidation. It's not a red-red. It's not an ox-ox. It's got to be one reduction and one oxidation. So that's why the equation looks like this. The actual galvanic cell overall voltage, the overall uh, potential difference, the, of what we sometimes call the E-cell, is equal to the, the uh, a potential of the cathode minus the reduction potential of the anode. And we have to do this such that the E cell, that the overall galvanic cell uh, potential, this E cell right here, is positive. Voltage has to be positive in the overall cell. Now, let's work an example. Let's use these half reactions to determine which one is the anode, which one is the cathode, and 
the overall cell potential. I'm using this example here because this is the exact same example that we worked in the last video. We're just going to work it a different way now. So once again, we have these two half reactions. Notice they're both written as reductions. Okay, even though we know that one's going to be a reduction, one's going to have to be an oxidation. Well, let's plug them into this equation here. E cell equals E cathode minus E anode. Now, I'm going to write them out two ways. We can have it where the, the 0.34 minus negative 0.44, or we could write it the other way, negative 0.44 minus 0.34. The way you know which one is the anode and which one is the cathode is which of these two little subtractions here give us the positive number. That's the question you want to ask. Which one of these gives you the positive number? And to me, it looks like it's this one right here. You know, E cell has to be positive. If you look at this over here, negative 0.44, you know, minus a positive 0.34 is a negative number. So that's not it. And so this over here is the correct one. And that means that it's, it's always cathode minus anode. So that means that the 0.34 is the cathode and the negative 0.44 is the anode. So that tells me that the 0.34, that the, uh, the copper over here, that's the cathode. And the negative 0.44 was the iron. That went with the iron, so that's the anode. So we can figure out which one is the anode, which one is the cathode, mathematically. And if you look back at the last video, you'll see that this is exactly what we said. That the iron was the anode, and the copper was the cathode. The cat gets fat, right? So, we also have to find the overall cell potential. At this point, that's easy. We just have to do this little math problem. 0.34 minus a negative 0.44 volts is 0.78 volts. And that's exactly what we said it was before, wasn't it? So looks like we got the right answer. Let's try another example. Oh, before we do that, we do have to remember that we're always going to be at standard conditions in the E cell, at least as long as that little degree sign is there, that little zero is there. That means that we're at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. When we have our concentrations in solution, they're all going to be one mole per liter, as we can see here. And if you ever have a gas, the pressure of the gas would have to be one atmosphere. So let's try another example now that we got that out of the way here. Once again, we have the same equation. Let's use these half reactions to determine which one is the anode, which one is the cathode, the overall cell potential, E cell, and it's also asking us for the overall balanced equation for the process. Well, once again, let's do the, the, that little math problem here. We're going to use the E cell equals cathode minus anode, and we're going to try it both ways. And ask ourselves which one gives us a positive number. We could do negative 0.14 minus negative 1.66, or we could go negative 1.66 minus negative 0.14. Which one gives us the positive number? Well, looks to me like it's this one right here, isn't it? That's going to give us the positive number. This over here gives us a negative number, so that's not the one. So remember, it's always cathode minus anode. So that means that the 0.14, or the negative 0.14, is the cathode. So that's the 10, as we can see. And the negative 1.66 is the anode, so that's going to be the aluminum. So we can see that it's tin is the cathode, aluminum is the anode. Now, we also have to figure out the overall E cell. At this point, that's easy. We just have to do this little math problem here. And when we do that uh, subtraction, we find that the E cell is positive 1.52 volts. And so that's all we have to do. Now, we have one more step. What's the overall balanced equation here? Well, remember, there's a reduction and there's an oxidation. Now, the cathode is the reduction, and it's, it's written as a reduction, so we can leave that one as it is. Notice that the anode, though, the anode is oxidation, 
And notice that it's written as a reduction. So we're going to have to flip that one around. So I just flip it to the other side there. Aluminum yields aluminum 3 plus and 3 electrons. And now we can add these together. Now, hopefully you see that the electrons have to fall out, don't they? And, and they don't do that here. So we're going to have to multiply the top half reaction by 3 and the bottom half reaction by 2 in order to make this work. The six electrons will now cancel out on both sides and the overall balanced equation is going to look like this when we add these together. I'm adding in the, the, the states as well. So there we have our equation. Okay, so that's how we can solve these galvanic cell problems by using E cell equals E cathode minus E anode. Okay, that's a fairly straightforward way of solving these problems. Remember, E cell in a galvanic cell always has to be positive. You know, if you look at a battery that you buy at the grocery store, it probably has a voltage stamped on it. And it says maybe you're, you're a a AA battery has a voltage of positive 1.5 volts. And so you put it into the radio or your flashlight and you expect to get 1.5 volts out of it. If you go to the grocery store and you buy a battery that says negative 1.5 volts, do not buy that battery. It is not, it is not good. There's something wrong with it. And it probably couldn't exist. Let's try one more example and then we'll uh, finish this video up. A galvanic cell is composed using nickel and an unknown metal at standard conditions. When the cell is first connected, its potential difference is read to be 2.12 volts. It is observed that the nickel electrode increases in mass as the reaction proceeds. And there we have the half reaction for the reduction of nickel along with its potential difference. We could have just gotten that off the list, right? Identify the anode and the cathode in the cell. Determine the identity of the unknown metal electrode. Write the overall balanced equation for the galvanic cell. And predict the sign of delta G for the galvanic cell. Well, let's start with A. Identify the anode and the cathode. Now, this is not a difficult question, but you have to know a little key piece of information here. And notice that it says that the nickel electrode increases in mass. That is an important part of this. Which of the two electrodes always increases in mass? Well, from the previous video, you might remember that the cat gets f fat. Right? The cat gets fat. That means that the cathode is increasing in mass. So guess what? Since the nickel is increasing in mass, that means that the nickel has to be the cathode because its mass increases. That means that the other metal, the unknown metal, has to be the anode. And we would correctly guess that its mass is going to be decreasing uh, as the reaction proceeds. Now identify the identity or give the identity of the unknown metal electrode. Well, for this one, we're going to have to use that equation we used in the last example. E cell equals cathode minus anode. So we're going to use that equation. And we're going to use, uh, we're just going to plug in here because the overall potential difference is 2.12. So I'm going to plug that in for E cell. And the cathode was the nickel. We just said that. So that's negative 0.25. I plug that in there. And we're going to subtract the E of the anodes. And that's what we don't know. So we're going to solve for that. And so just plug this in mathematically and be careful with your signs because that could mess you up here. But if you do the, the math correctly, we find that the uh, E of the anode seems to be negative 2.37 volts. Now, how do we go from that number to figuring out the actual identity of the metal? Well, we have to go to that list of standard reduction potentials. So you hopefully have that on a list or in a textbook somewhere in your notes or you can flip back to that uh, in the video here and you'll find that the metal that matches up to that uh, our reduction potential is magnesium mg so that's the unknown metal it's got to be magnesium well now let's write the overall balanced equation so nickel was the cathode so that means that's the reduction and so that's 
that stays as it is, so we're going to write that down here. The, the magnesium is oxidized since it's the, uh, it's the anode. So we're going to write it as an oxidation. So magnesium being oxidized into magnesium two ions. And we've got two electrons in there. Now we've got to add these together. And this time the two electrons fall out very nicely. So when you add these together, here is the overall balanced equation with the states put in there. So that's the right uh, overall reaction. Now, part D. Predict the sign of delta G in this galvanic cell. We just had to throw some thermodynamics in there, didn't we? Well, that's actually not difficult. As it turns out, every galvanic cell has to be thermodynamically favored. Otherwise, it's not going to run. So guess what? If it's thermodynamically favored, that means delta G has to be negative. Okay? That's not a trick question. You need to know that every galvanic cell has got a negative delta G. That means it is going to be thermodynamically favored. Okay. Well, I hope you learned something from this video. This was kind of a longer video. If you did learn something about galvanic cells and the mathematics and the calculations behind those, if you'll be so kind as to give me a thumbs up and give me a like. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Uh, I've been teaching chemistry for multiple uh, decades, and I want you to get a five on the AP exam. Uh, I've been... Uh, teaching AP chemistry for a long time, and I want you to be as successful in this class as possible. So join me again where we can learn some more electrochemistry and some more chemistry together.